Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. We're going to talk about the comic book industry. We're going to talk about Diamond. We're going to talk about some news regarding Diamond Comic Distributors, Inc. that they are announcing furloughs. This shouldn't surprise anybody. Diamond is closing up shop for now. Uh, whether or not they come back online remains to be seen. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about you know, what this means for comic shops, uh, that now even the mainstream media is noticing that uh, comic shops are in, in serious trouble. Then we're going to talk about small press and some of the options that people are coming up with now. And, uh, you know, it's, it's sad because we've seen the writing on the wall for quite some time in the comic book industry. I mean, at least five or 10 years. The writing has been on the wall. Diamond being a monopoly has been a huge problem. You know, people were sounding the warning bells and and just publishers would not listen. They wouldn't listen. Um, they kept assuming everything was going to go along as it had for decades. And uh, here we are. I mean, granted, nobody could have foreseen, uh, you know, the virus uh, speeding up the inevitable. But it is just that it was inevitable that if Diamond fell, the comic book industry follows behind it, or at least the direct market uh, follows closely behind. So Newsarama put this out yesterday. We already knew about it because a friend of ours actually works at Diamond, not going to say who they are, but they were posting on Facebook that they were going to be laid off. And uh, here we are. Diamond announces furloughs to combat the coronavirus impact. Jeppy Family Enterprises, the parent company of Diamond Comic Distributors, announced Monday it is furloughing some employees as a means to protect our company's financial future and preserve jobs. Obviously not the jobs of the people who got furloughed. Beginning Monday, all impacted workers currently enrolled in the company health benefit play will continue to receive coverage with Jeppy Family Enterprises paying 100% of the premium during the furlough. Okay, at least they're doing that. Uh, this is very similar to what Disney's doing where they're actually paying benefits. And a furlough again means that there's a chance that they'll be called back, but you know, maybe they'll downsize. Maybe they'll restructure. Maybe Diamond won't be calling people back. I mean, is Diamond sustainable? If all the comic shops go out of business or a good chunk of them, is it really a sustainable business model? And you got to look at it this way too. Diamond became a monopoly because it's not a very lucrative business to be in. If it was lucrative to sell comics directly to the 2,000 comic shops or less than 2,000 comic shops that are left in the country, other people would totally jump on it. And they haven't because there's not enough money in it to make it worth their, their time. Uh, Diamond suspended receiving new products for distribution as of April 1st and initially suspended payments to its vendors, but shortly after announced a weekly 25% payment schedule with 75% deferred payments to follow. Yeah, they basically told the vendors, uh, this is what you're getting, deal with it. And again, you know, Diamond can do that because they're a monopoly. If you tried to do that with... Uh, any kind of a bank loan you had or credit card, chances are your lender would tell you to go pound sand, right? Um, so here's a full statement. As you know, COVID-19 is having a dramatic impact on businesses around the globe. And unfortunately, Diamond is no exception because the comic book industry was already weakened. As a result, we have made the difficult decision to furlough some employees. This was not a decision we made lightly and we only do so to protect our company's financial future and preserve jobs. We have taken several steps already to mitigate our financial exposure, including delaying payment to publishers, extending vendor payment terms, and significantly reducing executive compensation. Basically, we stopped paying our bills. We stopped paying our bills, and that's how we're going to get through this. It is our goal that, on the other side of the crisis, our furloughed employees will return to their roles. It is our goal. Doesn't mean they're going to do it doesn't mean that on the other side of this, uh, there will be jobs available. It means that they're hoping, hoping that will happen. The furlough period begins on April 13th and all impacted workers currently enrolled in one of the group's health, vision, or dental insurance plans will maintain coverage. Well, there's that. Uh, during the furlough period, we will pay 100% of the cost of the premium. While the furlough is in effect, a number of individuals will continue working in business critical roles and in preparation for Chapter 11. I mean, in preparation for when we're able to resume distribution of new product someday. We're going to talk about that. For our retail partners, reorders of in-stock Diamond products can still be ordered for direct shipments via Diamond's retailer services website. Please continue to consult 
our coronavirus updates page for an ongoing list of resources, um, blah, blah, blah. As a company and an industry, we will navigate what lies ahead and we are committed to emerging and thriving on the other side of the crisis. We look forward to the day when we're able to be together again and resume the weekly distribution of new product. That is a very hopeful message. And you know what? Uh, people are telling Diamond uh, to go pound sand. <laughs> Some publishers are already coming up with a workaround and Marvel and DC may decide to break their uh, exclusivity contract, as I understand it, because of this, because they got to get new stuff out. So Rich Johnson over at Bleeding Cool has a version of the article, but the comments are interesting. The comments are really interesting because everybody is pushing for digital. They're all pushing for digital. The big two either goes digital or they break their exclusivity clauses with Diamond. I'm not sure which will cause the worst damage. Well, yeah, everybody's like, well, the shops can sell digital comics. That makes about as much sense as going to Walmart and going to a kiosk and buying MP3 downloads for your phone. Why the hell would anybody go to the trouble? You know, it doesn't make sense. Uh, the big two will have to go digital. I suspect they're just trying to figure out how they're going to break it to the comic shops. You know what? Disney and Warner Brothers will make it really damn easy. They'll make it really easy, especially, I mean, both of these companies, Disney, which owns Marvel, and Warner Brothers, which owns DC, both of them are hurting right now. Both of them have said things are going to be cut back. Disney, especially, they're, they're hemorrhaging money. The parks have been shut for a month. They've already taken out over $12 billion in loans just to keep the damn lights off. They laid off 45,000, almost 45,000 employees, union employees, uh, plus a bunch of non-union employees, plus they quit a lot of their construction projects. Do you really think at this point they give a shit about Marvel Comics publishing comics for 2,000 comic book shops? I don't think so. I think they're going to make it really easy. Hey, guess what? We're shutting down Marvel Comics as a comic book publisher. Game over. It's time publishers go digital, even though digital only makes up a small percentage of comic sales. Drain circle. Guys, come on with the writing. I like the strobe light line, but my God, get to the actual news. Uh, digital's the only answer, herder. How possible is print on demand? Very. Could printers local to comic shops be mailed the files and print what's been ordered? Okay, here's, here's the elephant in the room. If you're going to go print on demand, which is very viable, by the way, uh, there are multiple places that do that. They do a very good job, including Amazon. Amazon with uh, was CreateSpace, now it's uh, Kindle. Kindle uh, print on demand. They actually do very good color printing on demand. But do you need comic shops? No, that's the problem. That's what, you know, it's Occam's razor. The, the most logical thing that is going to happen and from a business perspective is going to be like, we go direct to consumer guys. You know, we don't sell floppy monthly comics anymore. Um, if we sell stuff on the newsstand, it's going to be like DC's giant 100 page giants or whatever, but we're not selling monthly comics anymore because it doesn't make sense. We'll sell the single issues digitally or we'll do something like a Shonen Jump, like a big telephone directory type thing. Uh, and then the graphic novels, the trades, we'll sell them through Amazon direct to consumer. At this point, that really is the only thing that makes sense. And that's horrible for comic shops. That's horrible news for comic shops. But I'm just telling you, objectively, these these companies are going to look at this and be like, this literally makes no sense to keep these operations up and running, cranking out monthly pamphlets for less than 2,000 shops and probably significantly less than 2,000 shops once everybody comes back online. So where do comic shops fit into this? Well, I think they kind of go the way of record stores where they're still out there, but they specialize more in back issues and collectibles and that sort of thing. And they rely less and less on monthly books because the monthly books could potentially go to digital. That is, that is an opinion. Now, uh, there are some publishers who are sidestepping the whole damn thing. And I got to give our friend Peter Samedi at Alterna Comics uh, credit because Peter has been ahead of the curve by accident, uh, completely by accident. Alterna Comics basically got pushed out of a lot of comic shops because they didn't like the fact that he wouldn't get political and he just wanted to sell comics. Imagine that. He just wanted to sell comic books. He didn't want people 
uh, to, you know, give hot takes or, or block customers or do any of that nonsense. And he's actually been very creative getting comics into other places. Uh, like I know he was in uh, uh, convenience stores. Remember comics in convenience stores? I remember that. That's when I first started reading comics. I'd pick them up at the 7-Eleven, pick them up at the newsstand. I used to buy a ton of Marvel books every week. They were 75 cents a buck uh, when I first started reading comics. And, you know, I could buy pretty much everything Marvel put out every month, you know, on my, my lawn mowing earnings. And uh, Alterna has kind of rolled things back a little bit, and they're doing newsprint comics, uh, selling them for under two bucks each, and getting them into places that traditionally haven't carried comics because they're too damn much money. And uh, Marvel and DC basically gave up on the newsstand years ago. And that's worked out so well, because here we are. Here we are. Anyway, they're not going to use Diamond anymore, if I'm reading this correctly, because Diamond is not going to... Uh, release any new product until August at the earliest. So they're can they've canceled all their solicitations with them. Um, they're going to be selling direct to readers and retailers for the foreseeable future. Do you even need Diamond? I think what's going to happen is a lot of publishers, uh, the smart ones, are going to be like, you know what? Fuck Diamond. Let's take them out of the equation completely. If we want to stay in business, we're going to find a way to stay in business. Uh, Diamond can go pound sand. And uh, we're going to find a workaround. And that probably does mean more direct to consumer or direct to shop. Uh, I don't know exactly everything that's being worked on. But the fact that Diamond's talking about, you know, not even shipping new product until August. In less than a month, several comic shops have gone out of business. Uh, several publishers have ordered pencils down on books. That's in less than one month. And you're talking another four months until shops can get until shops can get new new product, they're not going to stay in business that long. Unless it's a hobby. I mean, there are people who have comic shops basically as a hobby. It's something they do after work or on weekends, um, and they have a day job. And I know a couple of people who do that. In that case, they might be okay. But if you're depending on the comic shop to take care of you, to pay your bills, you're not going to be able to last until August. Not unless you specialize completely in back issues, which more and more shops are doing, uh, to be honest. In fact, several shops... I used to buy books from have gone completely uh, to back issues. They're not even carrying new merchandise because they can't sell it because it's not returnable. They don't know what's going to sell. They get stuck with a bunch of crap that winds up in the, the bargain bin anyway. So they just stop taking it. So this is the rumor from comicbook.com. The root cause for the August timeline has been a new policy diamond is handed down that allows publishers to delay any books that had previously been solicited for release in July. Some have taken that to mean that they're able to push those solicitations back until August or another time. Another time that best fits with the publisher's schedules, while others suggest it's completely unclear. Well, they just laid a bunch of people off. Uh, I think it's pretty clear that Diamond's not going to open up anytime soon. I really do. And I think a lot of those employees will probably go find something else in the interim because this is a shaky ass business to be in. Now, it's really interesting that the crisis in the comic book direct market has actually gotten the attention of major media outlets, including the New York Times. Uh, can comic books survive the coronavirus era? And they talk about it bluntly. A lot of people, a lot of people are going to lose their livelihoods. That includes comic shops. That includes comic book publishers this is absolutely going to decimate the comic book industry as we know it because the direct market is kaput for now i mean we don't know what the long term is going to be but for now the supply chain has been completely disrupted now one thing i'm going to take issue with is they're talking about how the comic book uh, industry is a billion dollar industry couple things to point out here one uh, they're, they're rolling comics and manga and graphic novels and crowdfunding all into that billion dollars. And even that, the entirety, the entirety of the comic book industry makes about as much money as one comic book movie, right? Um, but then movies are off the table now too. So it's, you know, all things considered, considering how many people work on comics, how many publishers there are, how many different, uh, distribution avenues there are and all that it's actually kind of a disappointing number and they did have to roll crowdfunding into it in recent years to make it look better than it actually was they said digital sales contribute about 100 million to that total yeah digital sales are only about 10 percent of comic book sales um and everybody's pushing for for comics to go digitally and i mean at that point you're you're literally decimating the industry 
um, because it's not sustainable. I mean, I could see if, you know, Marvel cut back to maybe 10 or 20 titles a month, you know, but uh, it's not sustainable to pay that many people to produce that many comic books for that amount of money. Um, they quote Heidi McDonald from The Beat, which we talked about this article before. Um, she says, I think it's an extinction level event. You, we keep hearing this a lot in regards to comics, in regards to pop culture websites, in regards to movie theaters. Um, you know, one month of disruption is all it took to throw non-essential industries into absolute chaos. And the comic book industry should have been better prepared. They really should have. There, uh, people have been sounding the alarms for years, years, and you know they were usually laughed at, including Heidi McDonald. Heidi McDonald actually mocked people who said the comic book industry was not in a very good place. Now she could be looking at graphic novels like Scholastic and manga and stuff like that, which actually are doing okay. And for the most part, their supply chain is not going to be disrupted at all because it's a very different model. But if you're talking the direct market, it absolutely is in dire straits and has been for a while. And this is just the kiss of death. Uh, it's life changing for everyone. This is a whole industry that lived on very thin margins. There's no port in the storm. No, there isn't. Here's the thing. Comics will live on. Absolutely. Comics will live on. But a good majority of people who have been making a living in comics for the last couple of years will probably not move on with comics. I mean, that is the truth. We're going to have a much leaner, smaller industry. We're going to have publishers selling uh, either directly to shops themselves or selling direct to consumer. We're going to have more graphic novels and trades, I think. Uh, we're going to have companies like Alterna come up with alternative distribution plans. And it's going to look very different. Basically, at this point, and this is really unfortunate because I love comic shops, but the only way a publisher can survive at this point is to basically take Diamond and the direct market out of the equation and see if they still have a viable business model. That's the truth. So we're talking crowdfunding. We're talking graphic novels. Um, you want to talk about print on demand. I'll talk about that for a second because we've actually used it before and it's pretty brilliant. In fact, Warner Brothers is using that for a lot of uh, kind of niche DVDs right now where they offer older titles that maybe uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense for them to mass produce a lot of a certain series, but they'll actually print the DVDs on demand through Amazon and mail it to you. We've, we've purchased DVDs like that before. Uh, same with books. If you want to trade paperback, I mean, they can do it uh, print on demand, but they're very expensive compared to having them printed someplace. Uh, but the advantage of Amazon, at least when um, we did our own books at one point, point in time we actually did publish a couple volumes of our webcomic and we used amazon for distribution um the first couple we actually did print on demand and then we did you know a couple of print runs and we just sent the books to amazon and amazon took care of the shipping direct to consumer it's very very easy uh and i can see more publishers doing that because everybody buys from amazon and again does this help comic book shops no it doesn't and that is the problem because we are looking at uh, an extinction level event for comic book shops because in the new economy going forward, frankly, uh, comic book shops don't make a lot of sense other than back issues and uh, other other stuff that maybe, you know, if you want a window shop, uh, you want to buy kind of niche collectibles and that sort of thing, but uh, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. You know, I mean, we've been looking at this for a while. We're like, okay, we want to get back into publishing comics and we've been biding our time but I got to look at this like, does it even make sense to go through Diamond at all? And clearly it didn't. And we've thought this for a number of years and now we're seeing why it doesn't make a lot of sense. So, you know, we got to think about that too. If we decide to, to do some other projects, like how are we going to sell these things? And, uh, you know, comic shops, unfortunately, are just not part of the equation um, for us. So I don't know. You know, they're talking to some, some freelancers out there. They're basically like, well, we're not feeling it yet. No, because they have their budget set aside. And if you're working for Marvel or DC, they probably have their budget set aside for the quarter. But you got to realize that uh, they're pension pennies, Disney's pension pennies. I would not be surprised if Disney decided to just pull the plug on Marvel as a comic book publisher in the very near future. 
In fact, they were kind of testing the waters over at IDW, another company which, uh, frankly, might be out of business by the end of the year. But they were testing the waters over IDW with you know superhero comics before Star Wars books. And now they're going to do another crossover for the High Republic. Does Disney even need Marvel as a comic book publisher at this point? No. And if IDW goes out of business, somebody else will come along. You know, they'll pay Disney to make comic books. That's how it's going to work. Uh, but it's interesting. Everybody's talking about it. Screen Rant has to explain what the direct market is to people because a lot of people don't even know. A lot of kids today, they don't go to comic shops. There aren't any comic shops around us. We have to drive like 45 minutes and we used to have a couple in town and we don't. Uh, you know, and you can't buy comic books in the convenience stores. Uh, say for Alterna's at Sheets, but other than that, you can't buy your Marvel and DC books. They do have the DC 100 page giants at Walmart, but you really got to look for them. You know, they're just not accessible. So kids are reading graphic novels or reading manga. Uh, at least my point of view, our, our kids, they only read manga and graphic novels. They don't read single issue comics. So comics failed a long time ago, uh, a long time ago. The writing has been on the wall for a while, and it's just shocking that so many publishers are waiting until the ship starts to sink to start building or even thinking about building a life raft. I mean, I, th I would have thought this would have been a duh, you know, um, really. But here we are. It's not getting better. People are losing their jobs. It's inevitable. It's going to continue. Uh, it's really unfortunate. So I'm going to wrap this one up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views and rants. And we will talk later. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.